Hello everyone, um, so I'm going to do a short video on some of the containers of oxygen, whether that be the cylinders or the wall mounted oxygen. Um, sorry about my progressively worse hair, there's nothing I can do about it, I'm afraid. Um, so uh, when you're in Westford Hospital, there are two ways which um, you will be able to get oxygen to your patients. There's either cylinders or there are um, walled oxygen, so we'll talk about cylinders first. So this is a um, cylinder that um, contains oxygen, and the way we know that is not necessarily the big words oxygen on the side here, um, it's actually the collar around the oxygen, which is here, and on the, on the collar, if you look at the um, what it is, you will see it's medical oxygen, so that's what we need to look at to know what we're giving the patient. There are other cylinders in the trust, so for instance, nitrous or carbon dioxide or air, we need to make sure that we're giving the patient oxygen. If we're doing some checks on the cylinder, we also need to look for the expiry date. So this um, oxygen expires here on the 28th of April, 19, oh, sorry, 2023, which obviously is quite a very specific date, apparently. And, um, and then when we get our oxygen, so when we first get it, we'll notice that um, it's got this valve here on the side, which can sometimes be covered by a ring pull device, kind of like a can, which you'll have to pull off when you expose this valve. When the oxygen cylinders first arrive, um, they can actually shut, this valve can be shut, so if you connect it to your patient and turn it on, um, then it won't actually work. So when you're first here, you need to just make sure this is open by just turning the valve, and you just literally just turn it all the way until it stops, and then it'll be open. You can't turn it too far in the Other features of the oxygen cylinder is here, you will notice there's a gauge to tell you how much oxygen is in this. And um, if you want to know how much oxygen it contains, if you look on the back, on, look on the side of it, and you'll see the name of this oxygen cylinder is a CD oxygen cylinder, and this contains 460 litres. So if you want to um, use this oxygen cylinder, you can use it, for instance, to transport your patient somewhere else in the hospital, and they're receiving 15 litres per minute. It doesn't really last that long. I think it's only. 15 or 20 minutes or something, this oxygen cylinder would last at the maximum amount of oxygen. So if you are going to transport someone with this oxygen cylinder, you need to think carefully about your journey and how long your journey takes. On the top of this oxygen cylinder, you'll see there's the actual valve that you turn on to actually give the patient some oxygen, and you literally just turn the valve and it says what number of litres per minute you're giving the patient, so one litre, two litres, three litres, all the way around to 15 litres per minute. Um, and then under this cover here, which will pull down, you've got your two valves that will connect all your oxygen devices to. You'll have a Schrader valve here, um, which you can connect to ventilators or high flow oxygen um, devices or the nasal high flow oxygen, which we'll talk to you about later. Or you've got a fir tree valve here, which is basically a tapered valve that you can push oxygen devices on and they'll stay on that. And that's quite a tight seal, so it will stay on it. And you can just pull it off. Safety things around oxygen is obviously it's heavy, you don't want to bang into patients, um, you don't want to drop it on the floor. They are designed so if, they, if you do, can knock the top of the valve off, um, that it will spin around and it's, as it's supposed to shooting across the um, ward. Um, it, um, they can be quite heavy, all these new designs are quite light, but they can feel quite heavy, so you've got to be careful with your backs. And um, also it's flammable, and um, so no naked flames around it, so no smoking or anything. But um, if you do mix petroleum jelly or anything like oils or lubricants, um, and that mixes with oxygen, that can become really, really flammable, almost explosive. So you'll notice that there's no um, sort of like oil or anything to put this together, and you can't put the um, petroleum jelly on the patient's lips and things. They obviously do come in other sizes. So you have a, another oxygen cylinder here, a ZX oxygen cylinder. And this is a bigger oxygen cylinder here, and this contains 3,040 litres, that will last a bit longer, but not forever, and so if you've got patients on the high flows of oxygen, it's better to get them on the wall oxygen, which is, which will come in a valve like this. Again, it's a, um, it's a valve that has a fir tree valve on the bottom here, there's a float that has a valve, but a fir tree valve on the bottom here, and this one works pretty simply by just twiddling this knob on the side here, and it will give you the uh, flow of oxygen you want. You'll know which flow, what flow you're giving the patient because there's a little ball inside here which will raise up depending on how much oxygen you're giving the patient. So for instance, I'm going to 10 litres here and I'll make sure that the 10 litre mark goes through the ball 
on here, so I know that's 10 meters coming out of here, and then I can connect my oxygen device or my um, to give the patient onto here. And that's um, giving the patient more oxygen. Um, it's important to know about oxygen that when you're giving it via a cylinder or out of the wall, that it's really it's absolutely dry, there's no moisture in it, so it doesn't rust. So that's a really important thing to think about when you're giving oxygen to your patient, that what you're giving is a really dry gas, it can dry out whatever you will, um, whatever place you're spraying into, either up the nose or in their mouth, and that will dry out all their sort of membranes inside the mouth of their nose, or any kind of sputum that the patient's trying to get out, and so if they have got dry sputum, it's really hard for them to cough out. So if you are going to be giving someone long-term oxygen, or high flow oxygen, it's important to try and explore the possibility of having humidified, which is very difficult in COVID times, um, but um, it's something that you know, hopefully we'll be able to do again soon. Um, so we'll show you some devices in the next video that you can attach to your patient to give them oxygen, and then we'll go on then in our Zoom sessions to talk about how you decide on what amount of oxygen you're going to be giving the patient. Thank you very much.